This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. I'm going to explain how you can customize a workspace here inside Encore. And to follow along, I want you to go get the 0205 Customizing Project. Now before, when you opened up a project, you did that by starting Encore and inside the splash screen using the Open Project option that way. This time I'm going to assume that you've already got Encore open. Now I want you to go to File, Open Project, navigate to the Working Files folder, Encore Project subfolder, and then clicking on 0205 and clicking Open, or just double click on 0205 Customizing and opening it that way. And here we are. To make sure we're on the same page, I want you to go up here to Workspace and click this drop down arrow and select Default. So we're both in the same default workspace. Now yours will probably look a little different than mine because I'm working in this lower resolution monitor than you're probably working in. I'm working at 1280 by 720. You probably are in a higher resolution. But nevertheless, the layout should look more or less the same on yours and mine. Now if you've worked inside Premiere, you probably already know about how you can customize a workspace. But I'm going to assume that you haven't learned that and we're going to start from scratch here. Here inside Encore, we have these things called panels, and this is uniform across basically all the Creative Suite products inside Adobe. These panels, and you can access the panels by clicking on these tabs. Each little panel has a tab. And here are four panels here inside this panel group. And the panel group is inside what they call a frame. So you've got four panels in a panel group inside a frame. We've got three panels inside this group, three over here, three over here, and two down here in the timeline area. Now you can change the size of the panels. It's quite simple by hovering your cursor between two panels and just dragging left and right. And notice how as you shrink one, you expand the other. You can also lift them or push them down, however you want to call that. Here I'm lifting this up, pushing it down, what have you. And notice how the panels respond. They all kind of act in concert, which is nice. If you put your cursor at a junction, it turns into a four-headed arrow, and you can slide them all around at once like that. And after messing around like this for a while and making just a horrible change, you're thinking, gosh, I really want to get back to where I started. I can probably sort of adjust things to get things back to where I started, but I'd rather have it be exact. The way you do that is by simply going up to this Workspace drop-down list, click on the arrow, and then go down to Reset Default, and that will take you back to the original version of the default setting the default workspace, and now we go back, we say, yeah, we accept this, we go back, and here we are where we started from. In addition to resizing things, you can move panels around. Each panel does not have to reside inside its own frame or the frame that it started, and you can put it in other frames. So for example, you've got the project panel, the menus and the timelines, but the build maybe doesn't really fit that kind of workflow. You might want to put that someplace else. Well, you can drag it out of this frame. Now it has this set of parallel dots there which indicate this is the grabber area, but basically the whole tab here in the top is grabbable if you want to call it that way. So I'm going to click on it and grab it. I start dragging it around. You notice that it makes these purple shapes. It makes trapezoids when you go around the outside of this frame and a rectangle on the inside. Trapezoid indicates that if you let go of the button here, you're going to create a whole new frame with just the build panel inside it, like that on the left hand side. If I drag it down to the bottom of this guy, it'll put it below it as a separate frame down like that. Or I can drag it to a different frame entirely. So I'll take it over to the right hand side here and put it inside this frame. And notice that it's a rectangle now. That means it's going to reside in the frame with the other three panels there. So now it's four panels in one frame. And when it gets kind of crowded like this where you can't read all the tabs, you get a little scroll bar that appears on the top. So you can slide it left and right to see all the panels. So you click on the first one now. Now that I click on it, boy, the uh, build panel just disappears there. So again, you can slide the scroll bar over to find it. There you go. If after you've made all these changes, you will probably want to save this customized workspace. It's very simple to do that. Just go to the workspace menu, click this drop down arrow there and say new workspace. Just give it a name. I'll call this one Jeff's workspace and click OK. And now that shows up in the drop down list there. So if I switch to something like, let's say, Navigation Design, which shows the flow chart, kind of interesting, and I want to go back to the workspace that I created, I just go back, I create the drop-down list, and there's my workspace, and we switch back. And when you switch back, you may not see the things that you saw before. That's one little issue when you go from one workspace to the next. So I'll just go back to Project here and open up the timelines and double-click on Scenic to get back to that one. 
One of the advantages of making a customized workspace is if you work someplace where there are several people working on the same computer and they all have their own workspaces, you can always go to the one that you like to work in. Some people may think that, you know, I got this properties panel over here and the properties panel is something I see a lot and I really don't want it here with the character and the metadata. I can pull that down here to the left, let's say, and put it right there and maybe shrink it down a little bit. So the properties panel is always open on its own. I don't need to worry about it kind of being cluttered up over here. So you may want to say that this is the workspace that I like and then save it. And then if someone else changes to theirs, you can always come back to yours. And if I say, you know, this is really the one I want to use instead of the one I used before, let's go back up here and say new workspace. If I type in the exact same name, Jeff's workspace, click OK, that'll say, you want to replace the one you got there? I say, yeah, I do. So that's how I replace it. Now when I go back and forth, let's say go back to defaults, I go back to my workspace that I just changed, the change will show up down here. Now after you've done all this work and you've created your workspace, you might say, you know, I really don't want to save it anymore. I'm going to get rid of it, so I'll delete it. So you go over here and you say delete workspace. But one little fly in the ointment here, if you have a workspace that's currently open, you can't delete that one. Jeff's workspace won't show up here in this drop-down list. I need to switch to some other workspace and then I can delete it. So I'll go back to default and now I can get rid of my workspace by clicking on delete workspace and selecting my workspace from that list and clicking OK. And now it's gone. All that work is gone. That's OK. I can always make it again. So there you go. That's the process to customize, save, and even delete a workspace.